Okay. <laughs> So when I was a kid, I always felt like I was kind of mediocre. I was never the fastest, I was never the funniest, I wasn't the smartest. I liked art, but I was never really the best at drawing either. And so when I was 21, I thought that I would sort of carve out my own little niche by going for three weeks and traveling by myself in Italy so that you know I could become this sort of crafty, intellectual, intuitive, sort of worldly person that, you know, that would be my thing. Um, and so that's how I ended up in Verona, Italy. And uh, the way that I would have this authentic Italian experience would be to stay, uh, to use couch surfers. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with couch surfers, but basically the premise is that it's a website where you send off a bunch of messages to people and whoever thinks like you sound like a semi-decent, fun person will let you crash on their couch or in their spare bedroom uh, for a few nights. So I felt like this would be the perfect way to have a real authentic experience and save a little money uh, as well. So um, I messaged like 20 different people. Nobody had space for me, of course, um, except for this one guy, Damiano Tieto, he, uh, messaged me back saying, hey, you know, I can't put you up for the night but um, here's the name of a hostel you can check out, and why don't we meet? Um, why don't we meet later tonight for like? And I'll show you around. And I'm like, oh, this is great! I have a hostel. I am gonna have. I have plans for later tonight. I'm gonna be going out on the city, but like with a real, authentic local. You know, I'm gonna get the real experience. Um, so I uh, go and check into this hostel that he's told me about, uh, and it's like way up on this hill, um, throw on the one clean shirt I had left from backpacking, um, and then run back down the hill uh, into the little piazza uh, so he can show me around. And uh, we go through a few like different landmarks around, and you know he's sort of telling me about uh, the different um, sort of like the history of some of the stuff, and he gives me a little bit of his own sort of stories about the landmarks. Um, and it feels like it's, you know, I don't know, it feels more like natural. It's like I'm not doing this sort of like prepackaged touristy thing. I'm getting like the real inside scoop. Um, so then the next thing I request is that I have some like authentic uh, food from Verona. So he takes me to a Osteria, which is like a little small sit-down restaurant, um, so that I can try the local dish, which is a pasta with meat sauce, but the meat is horse meat. Um, so he sort of gives me that warning as a heads up, like, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, and so I try it, and it's actually not so bad. It's kind of like a weird mix between like chicken and pork. You guys can try it. It might not hurt you. Um, and, uh, you know, and Damiano and I are actually getting along really well. Like, he seems to be really, like, laughing at my jokes, and, like, I'm sort of relaxed a little more. We're splitting a bottle of wine. That's probably helping, if we're being honest. And at one point, I sort of sit back and look around the restaurant, and, uh, you know, I see all these people laughing and joking and having a really good time, and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it. I just met this guy a few hours ago. This is, like, this is happening. Like, I'm doing the thing. Like, yes. Um, so we leave the restaurant, and he's like, yeah, we can check out this local bar. Um, and at this point, like, we're both a little buzzed, not going to lie. Like, so we kind of stumble over a few blocks um, to this bar, and uh, we're you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little more bold, so I start telling some stories about things that I'd done on my travels. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the book that I'm reading, tell them about the This American Life episode that I just listened to. Um, we talk about how weird money is for a while. Um, you know, it's just like, you know, it's just like someone I had known for years, and uh, and I'm not so nervous anymore, and like, I feel like, you know, I kind of have something to say that's worthwhile. Uh, so at this point, the hostel, um, I didn't mention this earlier, but the hostel that I'm staying at, the one sort of rule about it is that their curfew is midnight. Um, they're really strict about that just so that they can sort of lock things down. So at this point, it's getting to be late. It's probably almost 11, and I'm like, yeah, we should probably, like, you know, head back. 
Um, so he said, okay, well, there's one last thing that I think you should really see. Um, it's, and it's on the way up that giant hill uh, to, to your hostel. So uh, we trek up the hill, sort of drunkenly swaggering around. Um, and basically, there's a sort of lookout point uh, onto the rest of the city that's sort of like was part of an old palace or some rich person's house, I don't know. Uh, and so we were standing out there looking and it's dusk and uh, all the houses are lit up and you can sort of see the whole town. Um, and I'm noticing suddenly that like Damiano is standing like rather close to me, like much closer than before, like enough that I can smell the beer on his breath from like the last place from the bar. Um, and I'm also looking around and seeing like a lot of couples nearby. Like everyone's kind of like really cozying up with one another around me. Uh, and I'm sort of like, mm, okay, I think this is my hint to like, let's. So yeah, it's about 12, uh, 1130. I think uh, maybe we should get going so I can get back to the hostel. Um, so we uh, start heading further up the hill uh, back to where I need to go. And, and when we get to the door, uh, he's sort of talking about maybe meeting up the next day. Uh, he could store my bag. Maybe did I want to come back for this uh, concert that was going to be in a few weeks? And I'm sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I got to get inside. Um, and he said, okay, well, you know, and we lean in for a hug. Um, and the hug, uh, like, when he leans in, he kisses me on the cheek. And I'm sort of like, oh, right, that's like, that's a thing they do in Italy, right? And as I go to sort of pull back, suddenly his tongue is down my throat and his hand is on my ass. And I'm just like, whoop, what just happened? <laughs> and I sort of like stand there for five seconds, like just letting it happen to me. I'm just sort of like, I, he didn't seem to mind that I was just like, uh. Um, and so finally I like figure out what's going on and I pull back um, and I'm sort of like, uh, I should, and he said, so you want to come back to my house? And I'm like, wait, hold on, back up. You said we explicitly, I could not stay at your house because you couldn't have room. And now suddenly you're offering me a place to stay? And I'm just sort of like trying to process all of this. And I'm like, ah, hostel, gotta go, bye. And like turn around and run back into the hostel um, and like, just dive to like the bed that I'm staying at and I'm laying there going like oh my god what happened just now like that is not what I was expecting um but sort of once I calm myself down from this sort of like existential crisis of like what is everything what's the purpose uh I came to realize that even though it didn't really happen in the way that it wanted I was bold I was confident and I had made some choices and that was my thing so thank you. <laughs>